Hey guys, how y'all doing today? My name is Franchise Fanatic, and welcome back to the channel. And today, for you guys, this is another Star Wars uh, episode review of the Book of Boba Fett. Today, we're tackling Chapter Three. Uh, this is, of course, very much, uh, much maligned and hated. I'm not really sure why. Star Wars fans are kind of weird. They they go, oh, the prequels are great, the originals are great, sequels trash. Mandalorian is the best thing since Jesus, and this is apparently complete trash. Um, me, prequels pretty good, originals great, sequels perfect, Mandalorian great. Bad Batch, Clone Wars, Resistance, Rebels, all of it is great. Book of Boba Fett, Chapter 1, a little slow, but good. Chapter 2, really good. Chapter 3, this one, probably my favorite. I think uh, you're, you're actually going to be seeing uh, a different opinion, because a lot of them out there are quite negative. Now, I don't know if other people are just saying, oh, well, everyone is hating on it, so I guess I should too. You know, maybe that's the new thing. I don't know. People have been doing that crap for a freaking really long time. But, uh, you know, I actually enjoyed it. And I'm not just saying that because I love Star Wars. I, I actually enjoyed it. Um, so it starts off with kind of a, a different, uh, I guess, Boba Fett kind of goes to the Tusken Raiders and he kind of gets uh, assaulted, you know, and then, uh, you know, he goes back to the camp and all the Tuscans are dead. He kind of buries them, burns them, and kind of uh, seeks revenge. So that's the past element. And then as Boba Fett is in the back of the tank, he gets assaulted and beat up by Black Chrysanthemum, the big Wookiee dude. And, uh, you know, there's a big fight, really cool stuff there. And, uh... Basically, the Hutts are like, hey, we're, we're, we're going. Keep Chrysanthemum. We're effing out of here. See you. Peace. And then uh, they kind of give Danny Trejo, which is, I guess, whatever, I guess. what I don't know his name, but he's like a Rancor handler. Um, and I really enjoyed how they kind of brought in that Rancor, and they kind of, you know, Danny Trejo's character actually mentioned to Boba Fett that uh, <clears throat> Rancors are, they're not just trained killers, you know what I mean? And you see that in Return of the Jedi. And I always thought that scene was really effing cringy in Episode Six, where that big fat dude walks in, and the you know Luke kills the Rancor, and he's crying, and he's like, you know, he's crying like a little baby. I always thought that was kind of cheesy, uh, but now that we know in canon that you know maybe we knew that before, but I didn't know that you know handlers can actually kind of I guess uh, go with Rancors and become their friends, and they kind of form like a really cool emotional bond, which is really nice. Uh, and of course, I do think this is going to be a trap. I think it's it's pretty pretty freaking obvious um, that that the Rancor is going to try to kill him. But Boba Fett wants to ride him, so let's see how that works. And uh, this is really the episode where Boba starts to realize, hey, I can't just sit on my throne, act like a badass, and expect everyone to give me tribute and, and payment. I need to actually earn my respect. You know, he. What I like about the show is that Boba Fett in the originals and most of the comics and even the Clone Wars, the animated stuff, he very much is just this kind of because he's wearing a Mandalorian helmet, but he's kind of a straight-faced, kind of blank-faced bounty hunter. There's not much character to him. He's cool, yeah, but that's about effing it. I guess he tries to get revenge on Mace Windu in the, the Clone Wars, but, you know, you don't really know... He's not the most well-developed character in, in, the, in canon. And we're actually seeing that he's not just a dude that just stands there and grabs his gun and looks really cool and stoic. You know, he actually does shite, and the stuff that he does do was really cool. So I think that we're trying to... They're kind of... Robert, Robert Rodriguez is trying to kind of show that Boba Fett is not just a a loser who just stands there and <clears throat> gets money, you know. he he's, he's a bounty hunter, but he also has enough respect to understand and respect others, you know what I mean? He's not just like a an evil person. Boba Fett really isn't a bad guy. He's more of a, just a, a neutral person, so to speak. If there's credits involved, he's probably going to do it. And, of course, he is respectful in that regard, which, you know, it makes him a better character than just standing around like an idiot waiting to kill someone. I mean, that's just the facts. And I think that we're seeing that more and more, which is really nice. Of course, then he fights with Black Chrysanthemum and all that. He kind of shows that respect thing there. And then it kind of trips into, like I said, with the Rancor. That's leading up to something. And then he had this kind of biker gang that uh, they're kind of like uh, modified with droid parts, which is actually really effing cool. You never saw that before. And seeing like a, a biker gang, kind of like Ninjago, if you've seen Season 8, uh, Sons of Garmadon, it's like a big evil biker gang in that season. That's kind of what this is, except they're kind of good guys, and they're kind of just mooching off of water for a really high price, and Boba Fett offers them work. And there's kind of this really awesome chase scene with this, this like biker goth girl and these, these other dudes, this black dude with like a, a, a like a thing for, for an eye, like a, a robotic eye. Really cool people, and they're involved, and they're, they're kind of unique in that regard. That they're, they're kind of like General Grievous in a sense. They're humans, but they have droid parts in them which is really neat. Uh, and then that one dude, I don't know who the fudge his name is, but he's the, the, the kind of the weasel guy who's like, ah, oh, the mayor, the mayor! You know, that dude, kind of a squealy wi uh, witch and with a B. And basically, you kind of get that sense that, yeah, he's, he's effing out of here. He's like, yeah, we'll go see if the, the, the mayor has to talk, and he leaves, and he, he, poop, poop, he poops out of there. And then uh, there's kind of a chase scene with the bikes. And look, the chase scene is fun enough, but it's really weirdly and oddly 
shot because a lot of it is this dude in this you know speeder making these weird ass looks like you know like really weird looks <clears throat> and then you get the, the the you know the actual bikers and they're they're kind of cool I guess you know they're kind of like 80s 70s hot rods kind of thing which is kind of neat uh, but they're Star Wars so they don't have wheels and it's framed and shot where they're kind of slow and you have this one dude who's really fast and then you have these other guys it's it's just like the it felt like it was kind of in slow motion and that's not really a huge negative that's just, I'm assuming look Disney Lucasfilm they're not stupid they're not, they're not gonna make a mistake oh no we filmed in slow motion they're not gonna do that it's it's meant to look like that but it is a bit of a you know creative choice it's a bit strange uh, the fact that it, you know it's not gonna kill the effing uh, episode it didn't kill the mood or the vibe or the action scene but you know the the scene where that goth girl kind of goes <laughs> kind of skids up. And she kind of goes to the, the camera. It's a cool shot. And it's really fast. It's like, like that. And that's Robert Rodriguez. It's like, kind of very shaky, very intense, very fast. And the whole rest of the other chase is kind of slow. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, but it is kind of strange to look at when, you know, everything's going kind of slow motion. There are some really unique shots where they're kind of like skidding up and up the wall and all that. Most of that is getting destroyed. It's a fun scene. And I think people calling this the worst episode or the worst thing ever made. Look, people are just... Either they're jumping on the bandwagon because people hate it and they want to look cool, or they're just stupid because this was a great episode. It, for, it furthered into Boba Fett's story, how his character is progressing, had a really cool action scene, a bit a little bit slow and kind of weirdly paced, but it was still fun to watch. Uh, introduced a really cool biker gang, and of course we're going to go apparently to war with the Pikes. So there's a lot of unique stuff going on here. Can't wait for a chapter four. Again, I think people are kind of, I mean, you know... I, I'm used to people hating on Star Wars. It's just, a, it's like a freaking, it's like water is wet. You know what I mean? If the sky's blue, grass is green, that's just, that's how it is. People are going to automatically hate Star Wars because it's effing Star Wars. They're not going to give any reasons. Oh, it's woke. Oh, it's boring. That's what they do. And I've seen it countless times. And if you really do have a reason why you think people hate this episode, make sure to tell me in the comments below. But I personally enjoyed it. Fun, fun episode, fun characterization of Boba Fett. We're setting up a Pike War with the Huts, and you know everyone's kind of going together. There is a little bit of this sense of no vision, you know, like with Mandalorian. Din Djarin finds Grogu in like the first episode, and then you can kind of okay, I know where this is going to go. The first two or three episodes here, Boba Fett's just kind of sitting in the throne, like, oh, I'm Boba Fett. You need to give me work and respect. You know, that's all he does. And then it turns out that, uh, you know. Now there's, in episode three out of, what, seven or eight, we're actually getting some sort of plot with a Pike War. So, I mean, it's a bit slow, but the fact that we're getting characterization for Boba, Fennec Shand is still badass. You know, we got all these hut things. We got the Pikes. We got freaking the mayor dude. We got the biker gang. All this is starting to come together, and now we're getting the vision, and the plot is really starting to unfold. So, I enjoyed it. I'm going to give it from a zero to a ten. I'll probably give it an a, a nine. I think the only thing holding it back is kind of that biker chase, a little bit slow. Again, it's not horrible, it's not really boring to watch, but compared to, uh, you know, Chapter 2 with the train fight, where it's like very much a fast-paced, uh, intense uh, scene, seeing the speeder bikes kind of slow is a bit strange, considering they're like effing motorbikes that can float. They're kind of, you know, so I don't know, whatever. But I can't wait for Chapter 4. I think this episode and this show are getting overly hated, as did the prequels, as did the sequels. You know what I mean? I have issues with the prequels. I will say the writing and acting is a bit bad in those films, but I still love them because it's Star Wars, and they're fun to watch. Uh, this, you know, the acting's good, the CGI's good, the writing's good, the action's good. Everything is good, you know, especially compared to... You know, what we've seen with the other animated uh, shows under Disney, Lucasfilm, and the sequels. It's all good. But, uh, you know, again, that, that, that one biker chase is a bit strange. But I still, I can't wait for the future. I think, again, people are hating this just to hate it. I really don't see any real reasons why this is so bad. Black Chris Hansen's a pretty dope Wookiee. I think it looks really cool and menacing. And I just can't wait to see where everything goes here. The biker game, the goth, the, you know, the hot chick and the, you know, suiting up on the motorbike. It's cool stuff. So, again, I can't wait to see what Chapter 4 brings. Again, 9 out of 10. I hope you guys enjoyed the reviewed, reviewed, review, reviewed the review. And, uh, of course, again, hopefully my background is still good. But, again, tell me in the comments what you think. Why do you think people hate it? Did you like it? Did you not like it? Again, I really enjoyed it. I really don't understand the hate. I can't wait for Chapter 4. Thank you, guys, and we'll see you in the next video.